I am an intern urban designer at Urban Strategies and it's a really great position because I get to work with um, tons of different projects, tons of different people and get uh, exposure to pretty much everything that the company does at the moment. So I'm working on a few uh, projects mainly right now. The best one is actually my hometown which is Waterloo Region. They're building a light rail transportation system that will connect the three cities, the three sister cities, all together. And so what we're doing is providing a strategy for all of the stations. We're trying to figure out where growth should happen, which communities should be preserved, how to better take advantage of the infrastructure that the city is investing in. Whether it's designing a structure, designing an um, entire neighborhood, or even designing an entire city, the approach is kind of the same. The design process can pretty much be broken up into two parts, a qualitative and a quantitative one. It might seem that design is all about qualitative things, uh, making uh, beautiful streets, beautiful buildings, but really there's a lot of math that actually goes into all of those things. Every qualitative thing has to be accompanied by a quantitative uh, thing. While designing neighborhoods and cities, you have to be concerned about flow. Flow of people, flow of air, flow of light, flow of electricity. And what math allows is for us to quantify these things because every time you change one factor, everything else has to change as well. So in order to design cities and neighborhoods, we do use GIS and CAD quite a bit. We use uh, GIS in order to analyze the entire city altogether. Um, basically what that allows is for us to take bits of information, multiply it by other bits of information or divide by other bits of information, subtract, add, and as a result produce a graphic which um, may show you where more people live in the city, where the employment areas are. Are there areas of growth or areas of decline. With JS, what we're able to do is take massive amounts of information and turn it into diagrams and images that allow us to actually understand what is happening in the city, in the region, and how things all come together around our site. So using this 3D technology, we're able to analyze how many people will actually be able to fit into the neighborhood, as a result of which, um, how many shops there will be in the area how much traffic will be going through all of the intersections. Is, is this the right place to put a transit stop? Another thing we use 3D technology for is how much shadow will be produced by all of the buildings in the area. Because there are certain regulations about how much light needs to actually hit the street uh, in order to allow all the plants to grow, in order for, to keep people happy. Otherwise, you run into problems. I think it's extremely important to actually know what you're doing while putting um, variables into a mathematical equation or into a CAD program. Um, these are just tools, but you actually have to know exactly what they represent. By actually understanding the math that actually goes into building these objects in 3D, you can take some major shortcuts. You can actually create a formula to calculate how many people will be inside of a development only based on the area of the block you're talking about and the perimeter of the block. Once I had to do this exercise in order to actually calculate how many people will be able to live inside of a development, and I realized that instead of actually 3D modeling everything, I can actually create a formula in order to figure out how many people will be able to live there. You basically take the perimeter of the site, you multiply that perimeter by the thickness of the building that will be there, uh, and multiply that by the height of the building itself. With this formula, you actually get a very accurate representation of what will be there if you actually built it in three dimensions. So um, after finishing high school, I applied to several programs and was very fortunate to get into the University of Waterloo School of Architecture, which was really great. But the best part about the program was that they had co-op terms on which we, uh, we would study for four months and then we would work for four months. And so every four months I was able to work at a different office and every time it would get better and better and I would get more and more experience. The best advice I would give is to try to get involved with a program that uh, allows for work terms uh, in the middle of study terms. So instead of just getting a classroom education, you actually go out and get real experience every four months 
um, and really kind of make yourself a part of the workforce. Math is extremely important in high school. It, uh, it might not seem like the best, most exciting thing at the moment, but once you actually um, once you leave high school, you begin to realize that its applications are everywhere. 